Hey guys, JC Smith here. Today is uh, day, what, three? Third day I'll be working on the Navigator. I got just a few little trinket items I want to take care of real quick so it can be ready to go when the parts show up. Now the parts, let me talk about that real quick. Uh, this is a controlled loss, as I said, so I'm watching parts cost very, very closely. I want the best parts I can get. Um, what I mean by that is I want specific brands of specific parts. Um, there's companies that make these cam phasers that I won't use. Dorman is one of them. Uh, I used a set of them in the very first set I did because they were cost effective and Dorman had a good name, but they are very, very problematic. The first Within the first week, the first cam phaser started rattling, making noise. I had to take it back out, and three weeks later, I had to do the other one. So essentially, I did the first job three times because of failed parts, failed new parts. Uh, so what I do now is I use OEM Ford. Uh, there's companies out there that sell the OEM Ford cam phasers, um, and they're they're more than a doorman, they're more than everybody else. But I got to tell you, I've never had to go back in and redo them. So to me, that's worth it. So that being said, the the timing set, the actual change, the tensioners, and the guides, and the cranks. Uh, sprocket. Uh, those are coming from um, Rock Auto. Those are going to be Seal Power, which is a good company that builds good quality engine products. Uh, so that's where that's coming from. The power steering pump and the power steering hose is coming from Napa. They were cheaper than Rock Auto when you add in the shipping. Napa was cheaper, so I got that there. Got my oil filter from Napa. Um, the fuel filter, air filter, spark plugs all came from Napa. It was uh, by the time I figured in shipping for everything, they had the best deal. So that being said, the total I told you guys was about 800 and some dollars is what I thought I would be at, and I was I was a little over by a hundred dollars, but that's because of that power steering pump. Oh, and the idler pulley, which is coming from Rock Auto, um, and the power steering hose. Those three things took me over that, but by sourcing the parts from several locations and being very very careful of where I was getting it from um, I'm back down to that 800 ish mark right now so uh, the next thing on that was going to be the wheels and tires now let me tell you what I'm gonna do here a buddy of mine says he has a set of tires he took off his navigator and they're supposed to be half tread they're supposed to be in good shape I haven't seen them yet um, but as of right now I'm not gonna do anything with tires um, because and I'll tell you why I want to get the engine back together I want to get the uh, navigator running and driving. I want to make sure that uh, everything does what it's supposed to do. We don't have any uh, any more surprises. Uh, if I don't have any more surprises, I will prefer to order four brand new tires. They're, the ones I will order are made by Mastercraft, Cooper, uh, uh, what I understand is the same company. I've been buying their tires for years and years for, for the F250s and the 350s, um, and I've had very, very good luck with them. And they're um, as far as a you know, tire goes, they're reasonably priced. I think I can put four brand new tires on there for right at right under six hundred dollars. So six hundred bucks. Um, that put me at fifteen hundred. If nothing else comes about as a surprise, uh, as fifteen hundred dollars, I'm going to put into it. Now, of course, that's a loss, but it is what it is. If I can put brand new tires on it, I would prefer. Now, the alignment was good on the truck. Um, it, it drove good, it handled good, the tires didn't wear weird, they're all just flat and bald. Um, but, uh, so hopefully I'll be able to do that. The, uh, the air ride on that, that Lincoln has been um, completely removed. That is a coilover strut uh, suspension now, which is by far better in my opinion. The oil, or the air, air ride suspension is nice, it, it, it is very, very uh, smooth riding and all that, but however, at the maintenance level, it is miserable. So uh, that's been removed, so we don't have to worry with that. Uh, I looked at all the brakes and the rotors, they're all in really good shape. It must have just recently had uh, brake pads put on, so that's a good thing. But uh, so, anyhow, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down there, do just a few trinket things that I need to do to it, and then I'm going to move it out of the way. And um, my intentions are to move it out of the way. Of course, it can't start, it can't drive it off to use the great all to move it, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to move it out of the way, and then I'm going to get the wheels and tires off of the 
F550. I'm going to clean them up, pressure wash them. I'm going to get all wired wheeled, get them ready to go, and I'm going to get the paint. We're going to paint those wheels, and hopefully I'm going to let them cure for a few days. I have some spares I can put on that chassis, and while they're curing, I'm going to get the F550 back around that chassis so we can get to set the body on. Uh, I haven't made a decision on if I'm going to undercoat that cab or not. I don't know. The cost of the material to do it is about $100 with everything to do it, with the stuff I wanted to use. And it's not that, it's the fact that when you do that, and I have to set that cab on, the way I'm, I set that cab on using my forks underneath the body, I'm going to scrape off a good portion of that. And uh, I just don't know if it's if it's a, a wise move. I mean, it would be nice for the next guy, but at the same time, I, I don't know. I haven't decided on that. If I do, I have to... I have to get the stuff today, and I'm going to have to get at it today because I'll need it to dry because uh, here this weekend, I, at least by Monday, I want to be putting the cab back on that 550. like this one you drill this little bit takes that thing off and then out it comes I just take the drill bit make sure all the rust is out of there I want to make sure the brake line will swivel on there real nice see I uh, cleaned it up on the vise so all right let's make the brake line Now that, that is a lot of bends in one brake line. That is going to be a pain in the tail to get in there. I'm sure I'm going to have to take a few bends kind of out and then put them back in just to get it back in where it was, but give it our best shot. It's got to be better than the rusty crap that was in there. hot this morning it was already hot and then uh, we had a thunderstorm come through and of course it was uh, a downpour I mean, it, it hailed like you wouldn't believe it was uh, it was pretty bad I, I was outside working and it was blowing it uh, the rain halfway across the shop it was it was a lot of rain and uh, it only lasted about 15 or 20 minutes it quit of course just enough to make it the humidity even higher uh, the temperature isn't horrible today I can see the thermos the thermometer over there says it's just under 90 but man the humidity is so thick I mean it's the humidity is so high I just I don't know one of those days where it's kind of tough to breathe. Oh well, well. You gotta keep going. You got work to do. Can't be uh, can't be hiding behind excuses. Gotta get these wheels off this frame, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get it lifted up so I can get the front wheels off. So I get them painted. I'd like to. Uh, I like to get them off, get these front wheels, or get all four wheels painted, I should say. That's a pretty good guess. That's not far off at all. Um, anyways, I'd like to get them off and painted so they can dry. All that other stuff. Man, that pretty sure feels nice. I got all the lug nuts off except for one, so it didn't fall off. But well, I'll tell you, getting that one tire off, I was beating on the tire so much, I wanted, I was, I was just going to give up on it, because I was about to ruin the tire, I think. Maybe not, but it sure felt like it. You know, I'm just fearful, I guess. Alright, that's enough air. Get these tires off here. Man, if you guys ain't got one of these new jacks, 
you ought to get you one man i'll tell you that's a that's the easiest jack i've ever had the pleasure of using it's almost effortless when you're jacking stuff up i mean it's still a little bit of work but you know the older we get the more concerned we are with time and effort we realize there's only so many hours in the day so many days in a year and I've only got so many left on this on this planet so well then I go to another planet I guess I don't know but yeah here's the one I beat on and uh, what I found was it was just a a layer of crud right here so I'll take and uh, pressure wash that real good and then take some um, emery cloth big long emery cloth and run around there and try and get it off scuffed up my hub paint a little bit off to repair that and I can touch up my leaf springs you see what I mean about leaf springs are so tough I got a little light in here and in here because that wheels on so we'll touch that stuff up too but I want to get these off <coughs> 19 fives. They're lighter than 22 fives for sure, but man, that's a still a pretty hefty tire. I don't know why they got these monster grabbers on the front, but I don't know if that'll show up on camera, but these things are dipped and cupped pretty good. I don't know if I'll even go use this. I don't know. It's got a lot of tread on it. Put it on the back with enough weight, it'll straighten out fairly quick, I guess, but until then, it's going to ride like crap. The rest of them are in pretty good shape, except for this one, of course. That's what happens when you put aggressive tires on the front of a full-wheel drive Super Duty. Well, I'll tell you, just struggling with this. I'm trying to get them set up so I can go through and pressure wash them all and not have to... Uh, keep stopping the move stuff good night I'm sweating horribly just walking back and forth you know I got a good set of Goodyear well I don't really care for Goodyear tires but let's put it this way I have a set of Goodyear tires that have very very minimal wear they're 19 fives that would go on this truck, but I don't know if I think it's the right tread pattern for a four-wheel drive. I don't know. All right, let me get the pressure washer set up. Good day to pressure wash when it's so hot you can't stand it anyways. Might as well be soaking wet with cool water, I guess, rather than sweat. That sucker ain't going to stay there, is it? That's a wheel plop. Wheel flop. That sucker's for sure gonna flop over on me. Yep. I got to prop them all up. All right, let me get set up. I bring it back. Hmm. Brandon was using my grade all. That looks like somebody's rubbed something. get some of that uh, oh rust neutralizing garb and put on there all right so this is the tire I was talking about it's got let's see if I can show that good of course it ain't gonna show up good in the camera in the camera but the edges are kind of feathered and you got high spots here and there and uh, kind of hard to see here yeah there you go now you can see it see the dip in here it ain't worth discarding the tire. What you know, it's it's not that bad. It's just been on the front end too long. So let's we'll make sure that one goes on the rear. Man, camera won't focus. And then the one is garbage. 
Um, obviously, this is an old, old crappy tire. So I think I have another one of these. If not, I'll get one. Or if I can't find that, if I don't have it and I can't find that same tread, I will get two steer tires and replace this here one and that there one and put two steer tires on and throw this in the truck for a spare. Uh, now that being said, I have more wheels, so I'll just leave it on the rim. That way, uh, actually probably the smarter thing to do might be to put this on the rear of the truck and run it for a while and use one of the others as a spare. So if you had to use it on the front, it wouldn't be such a mess, right? I don't know. Smarter people got the answer, that's all I can say. But that's all this rust. That's that Oklahoma clay, man. It just beat the crap out of it. You can actually see gouges in the paint. Did I say that right? Gouges. Yeah, there you go. Gouges. All right, I'm going to go head out and get some paint now so that I can be ready. So if the weather's good tomorrow, it's getting pretty late today. I started early again because I had a lot to do. And Mrs. S is out of town today. She's visiting a, a sick uncle down in Parkeysburg. She told me I had to stay busy. I couldn't loaf. So I had to stay, keep working. If I didn't get all my stuff done, then I wouldn't get dinner when she got back. So uh, I like dinner. So, all right, I'm going to go get some paint. Get me some silver paint, see what I can find out. I don't know what I'm going to get. It's going to be whatever Rust-Oleum oil base is, whatever they have, because uh, I'm not going to buy custom paint for these wheels because I have the feeling where we're going with this is simulators because everything else is going to be so nice. And I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell. All right, guys. Catch you on the next one. Okay, guys. So I'm out of the store, and they didn't have what I wanted, which I didn't really think they were going to, but they had uh, oil-based aluminum. It's Rust-Oleum, same thing I got for the frame, and they had smoke gray. So what my thought is, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the aluminum and I'm going to spray one of the wheels. I'm going to see what it looks like, and if I'm happy with it, I'm going to move, move on with that. If not, what I'm going to do is pour all the aluminum in the mixing cup and then start adding some uh, of the smoke gray little by little and what I don't like about the aluminum is it the last time I used it I don't know if it'll be the same this time or not but uh, last time I sprayed it it looked too much like chromey go fast you know rattle can chrome is, is what it really looked like and I didn't like it um, so what I'm thinking is I wanted I would have liked it if it was brought down just a little bit not quite so shiny so I was thinking maybe what I should do is add just a little bit of smoke gray to it and bring it down just a touch. If it brings it down just a touch, I'll probably be all right with it. So uh, I gotta be careful not to add too much gray because I don't want it too dark either. I want it just, just off of that, just a step down from that chrome, chrome look or aluminum, whatever, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, I'm gonna leave you with that. We are, It's it's been another, man, another long day. Um, we're running a little bit behind on videos, but uh, that's why sometimes you'll see two come in in one day. Sometimes I get a little more time, a little more free time to edit and to get them, get them up. But anyways, um, uh, we've had thunderstorms all day long, and it's getting ready to do it again. So there's nothing else I'm going to be doing in the shop today, so I'm going to do a bunch of editing and all that kind of crap. And I have a bunch of paperwork to do, too. So, um, But before I go, I want to thank... Um, BS74 again for the shirt. Thank you so much. I really, I appreciate it. it it's very, very kind of you uh, to get me this shirt. I appreciate it. And uh, just as soon as we get our stickers, I will be sending you some. Um, they'll be the J.C. Smith Projects uh, stickers. So, uh, anyways, thank you again. I truly, truly appreciate it. I really, I really liked it. So, all right, guys. Uh, that being said, I'm going to leave you on that. And like I always say, if you like what we're doing, give us these thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and uh, leave your comments down below. All right, guys, catch you on the next one.